I have an article from a cosmetolitan a few years back that was entitled, With the World's Oldest Profession. And they're talking about prostitution. So I'm going to share that with you because I think it paints a real picture of what prostitution is like. It says, the 2000s have not been kind to prostitution. Practitioners of the oldest profession are haunted by the specter of AIDS, enslaved by crack cocaine, stalked by serial killers, psychotically obsessed with whores. They now use computers, databases, electronic communications equipment, and clever money laundering techniques to elude detection. Everybody has it hard in the business today, says Fresh, except maybe the pimps. Fresh would be a prostitute. Washington detective Mark Gilkey has posed as a John about 1,500 times, disguised in everything from a priest collar to a turban. A streetwalker, the detective informs me, can make $600 to $1,000 a night, though her pimp takes it all. She might get a fur coat or a ride in his Mercedes. Ever in the shadows, they're rarely arrested because their girls are too terrified to testify against them. Anyone who has thought of prostitution as glamorous should take a short ride with Gilkey. He'll tell you of a hustler he knows who's pimp, unhappy with her take for the evening, broke her arm, then refused to let her go to the hospital to have it set until she made another $600 in tricks. A large woman in purple hot pants, shine, taunts passing men. She weighs 205 pounds, she boasts, opening her coat to prove it. She's 29, been hooking for 15 years, and considers herself a beneficiary of the AIDS epidemic because Johns now avoid thin women, fearing they have the disease. Still business is suffering, she complains, because officers like Gilkey are applying so much pressure. In the past year, she's been arrested 35 times. As Gilkey scans the shadowy urban landscape, she recites her fees, 40 for oral sex, 60 for intercourse, plus another 20 for the hotel. If you can be real quick, we'll do it in the car, she says, ever hopeful. The detective smiles, but says firmly, go home. Washington call girls charge about $250 an hour with a discount for cash. A typical date, though, lasts only a half hour, 15 minutes for talk, five for negotiations and credit card transactions, and 10 for sex. A hotte hooker at the top of the ladder can generate as much as $200,000 of business a year, half of which goes to the escort agency. Most carry cell phones and pagers to stay in constant touch with dispatchers who direct them to their next trick. Last night, Ashley made $1,000, hoping to please her pimp who took all of it. Lately, he's been dissing me, she says with disdain. Turning an eerie vaporous light, she displays an ugly scabrous wound on her cheeks and shoulders where the man scalded her with a pan of boiling water. She knew it was coming, didn't flinch. It was either hot water or the gun. She holds up her left hand, shows where her pimp fired a pistol into her middle finger. That's all they do, take your money and beat you up. She counts diplomats, visiting lobbyists, even a policeman or two among her tricks. Cops want their nut and orgasm, just like everybody else. Tracy is working the corner of 13th and M Streets Northwest, clad in a skimpy leather vest and skirt, her 38-inch bust barely contained by a sheer black blouse. I was blessed, she says, looking down at her bosom. The irony of her comment is lost on, here, on her. She grew up in Little Rock, moving from one foster home to another, was adopted for about a year once, but then abandoned on a street corner. Tracy started hooking when she was 15, did time for grand theft and burglary two years later. Now 23, she has four sons who think she earns a living as a dancer. She lives with her pimp, Daddy, she calls him. I never had a mother or father. I'm his big baby. He spoils me, holds me, the first man I've ever met who's never hit me or said I'm stupid. Daddy used to have women wife-in-laws as pimps working girls call each other, but the competition among them for his favors proved too volatile. She's been arrested 20 times this year, usually for failing to obey. Business has become more competitive, too. All these crackheads are selling their bodies for $20, she says disgustedly. Tracy charges $40 for oral sex, $100 for intercourse, straight sex, unless business is slow. 
Then her price drops in half. She'll usually make a grab for the John's wallet, she says, even while having intercourse or performing fellatio. There are some services Tracy won't provide. No kissing, she says, wrinkling her nose in disgust. That's nasty, all that spit. In her mind, the kiss denied preserves for her a shred of dignity. I don't put my lips on them at all. I put my lips on rubbers, she says. The scrim of latex offers not only a barrier to disease, but an important emotional remove as well. Tracy is intimately acquainted with the feelings some customers can incite in her, fear. In addition to condoms and cigarettes, her small black purse contains a can of hot pepper mace and a retractable razor blade. If somebody tries to hurt me, I'm gonna cut his head off, she says. She has good reason to be afraid. Three years ago, a John shot her in the gut robbed her of $500 and dumped her out of a moving car. And a few weeks ago, her friend Diane was found murdered in a field near Dulles Airport. The next section of the article is entitled Communities Fight Back. Uh, many cities have discovered an effective way to rid their communities of prostitution, harass and humiliate not just the streetwalkers, but the men who hire them. Members collect the names of men arrested for soliciting sex, then they hold a drawing. The winner is designated John of the Week and identified on about 250 placards posted throughout the neighborhood. Other Johns, beware, your name could be here next, the posters say. In New York, they decided they too should target John. So they send notices with the words patronizing a prostitute on the envelope to the men's homes. Many prostitutes have AIDS, she says, who in his right mind would engage in sex with them. Men who solicit these women are probably not responsible enough to warn their wives. In Portland, Oregon, they have decided to seize John's cars. Over the last five years, officials have impounded more than 1,200 vehicles and towed them to a vast storage site they call Seizure World. Many of Portland's prostitutes have been forced to migrate with their business north. Under the Keys Please approach, offenders must pay towing and storage costs averaging $250 and reimburse the city for the cost of the vice officer's time. Repeat offenders lose their cars forever. If a wife or girlfriend holds the title to the vehicle, she too must sign release documents. It may be the last thing he ever sees her sign other than the divorce agreement, he says, but there are some who arrive holding hands. They are love struck, have worked out their differences, and I think, wow, what has he said to her? The next section is entitled Big Ticket Ladies in the Electronic Age. Disguised as a bar and grill paint shop antique store or limousine service to avoid detection, these organizations attempt to stay ahead of the bust. Escort X, whose girls charge up to $400 an hour, also trade information about vice, vice squads. To sniff out sting operatives, dispatchers conduct exhaustive background checks on customers, verifying employment records, social security numbers, credit histories, and any propensity toward violence. For their part, undercover police are becoming more savvy at providing the information required by the escort services. I take in my old running clothes and scatter dirty laundry around the hotel, says Gillespie. For every question a girl or dispatcher asks, I have an answer. So far, he rates the city's battle against the agency's a standoff. The last section is entitled, A Hooker's Dream Leaving the Life. Almost every city plagued by prostitution has an outreach program that tries to protect hookers while they're on the street and occasionally manage to lure one from it. Susan Mason, coordinator of the prostitution outreach program, Sasha Bruce Youth Work Incorporated, cruises Washington's hooker haunts nightly in an unmarked van passing out free condoms, ever on the lookout for a girl ready to leave the life. She offers free coffee and tea, a chance to rest weary feet, and a sympathetic ear. She also hands out a laminated card with the name of her organization. I just want them to know me so when they decide to make that move, they'll let me help. Jackie Jasper, a former Girl Scout and high school honors graduate, is one of Sasha Bruce's successes. A hooker who's worked in 20 states, Jasper lived by the simple rule, you slip, I clip. 
Translation, the moment a John turned his head, showered or nodded off, she would cop his wallet, wristwatch, gold change, or anything else of value. She prided herself on being able to con customers, sexually arouse them, and then pressure them for more money. I could nickel and dime them all the way to the lint in their pockets, she boasts. One score she remembers well involved a senior White House staffer who arranged, with her pimp of course, for Jasper to meet him in Florida for a party. The pimp got a thousand dollars and fare for Jasper's plane ticket. She was met in Palm Beach by a driver who led her to a waiting limousine, opened a bottle of brandy for her and showed her how to operate the stereo. At the hotel she changed. She brought only a makeup kit and royal blue evening gown. She styled her hair and was chauffeured to the party where she met her date. He was a gentleman, she recalls. He opened doors, pulls out, pulled out chairs for me, the kind of guy I could get used to. He never slipped, so I never clipped. Later they returned to the hotel and had sex, which lasted only minutes. He gave her a $500 tip and a gold necklace. Sixteen hours after her arrival, she was back on the plane to Washington. Many other evenings, though, were terrifying. Her pimp, convinced she was skimming money, he was right, once tied her to a bed, beat her unconscious, and set her long brown hair on fire. Her wounds, many of them between her legs, required 135 stitches. Not long ago, with the help of Sasha Bruce, Jasper gave up the life. Recently married, she now works two jobs that pay only a fraction of what she used to make, though she now gets to keep it all. I've been good for so long, the police gave me back my mugshot, she boasts. It just took me a little longer to get to the American dream. So I hope this has given you a true picture of what prostitution is like. We will be having a little discussion about what you think about some of this. So you will see that in the class. Thank you.